morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 430 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show, starring Mademoiselle Lola, <laughs> here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah. And that's definitely a puppy gazing into your eyes going, human, please do not go away that long ever, 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 ever again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you were missed. Oh, you yeah, were no missed. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, he, Mr. Beaver, And uh, with me is my good friend, uh, Mr. Grizzly. Today's date is Monday, July 22nd, 2024. It's going to be a beautiful day here at Beaver Lodge. I hope. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be nice. Uh, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfy Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Before we go any further, and uh, as if you've been living under a rock, uh, it's been a big weekend. It's been yeah. a hell of a big weekend. Oh my God, it's been a hell of a past big few yeah. weeks, whatever. Uh, but Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? Um, you know, uh, I'm a little tired. Um, I'm, st- I'm still recovering from the, the, the weekend. And by that, I mean, I got home at 4 a.m. on Saturday. Yeah, because you got caught with the crowd strike thing. Actually, it no? didn't. It didn't affect Calgary Airport. It was just oh. West, WestJet's ineptitude. Their flight was delayed by two and a half hours, um, and they charged me seventy eight, sixty eight dollars to check a bag on a delayed flight. They will never get a red cent from me, ever, ever, ever again. Mm-hmm. You will no, not happening. No way. Mm-hmm. I will never fly with them again. Mm. WestJet, you burned your bridge with me. Mm. The flight was delayed by two and a half hours, and you still charged me $68 to check a bag. Mm. Help a brother out here. Mm. Never again. Mm-mm. First experience, worst experience. That Never like again. Customer service. No. no. So I'm, uh, I'll fly Porter. Porter and uh, the dreaded Air Canada from here on out. WestJet never gets my money again. I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah. That's not how you treat your customers. Yep. Now, the staff on the flight, yep. wonderful. Yep. Wonderful staff on the flight. I'm not holding the staff responsible for this. I'm holding the organization responsible for this. Yep. That's a policy thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Um, the flight was good, as could be, you know, considering. Um, new, brand new aircraft. Did you know that new aircraft have no video screens? <laughs> None. Neither the, okay. the flight there or the flight back had video screens. I watch movies on my phone, right? Right. But uh, yeah, no screens. Okay, fine. I don't. I don't care. I 
I got a phone. I can use that, right? right? Uh, Porter has free Wi-Fi, free drinks, and free food. WestJet, who was two and a half hours late, did not offer anything but soda, water, and one simple bag of pretzels. Anything else you wanted, you had to pay for, including Wi-Fi, which is free on Porter. Mm -hmm. So again, WestJet, you will never see a red cent from me ever again. Worst first experience ever. Nope, you're done. Bye. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yep. You know, I get home at 4 a.m., it, well, we landed at 310. By the time we got off the aircraft and got our luggage, it was about quarter to four. Uh, took an Uber home. Of course, I met uh, my beloved at the door and um, and then my very excited Dogo, who was very happy to see me. <laughs> so I had to take her out right away because she was so happy she had to pee. Yeah. Uh, I got to bed at around five and Lola woke me up at six to go back out again. So I took her out again. And then I went back to sleep for about four hours. So Saturday was kind of a, I was a zombie. Right off. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I don't know if I could have spelled my name correctly on, on Saturday. Uh, so Sunday, not a, not a whole lot better to be honest with you, because you know, your, your whole system is thrown out of whack and everything is actually two hours earlier for me. Right. So, cause I'm still on mountain time. Um, so yeah, today, today will probably be the back to normal. I'm hoping because I, I really, I need to get back to normal, whatever normal is. Mm. How about, how about this normal sleep pattern? There you go. That would be nice. Well, I mean, you know, I was getting up every day at four 30 for the last two weeks, mm. which is difficult enough. Yep. I would take a nap afterwards, but it's still it's yep. interrupted sleep. Right? Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Same oh, thing yeah. at same thing at my end here. I've been, the, yeah, I, I, we were talking a little bit before the show and, you know, saying that yeah, you're a little frustrated and not much patience for stuff. And I've been yeah. in the exact same spot. I don't know what happened, but about two, three days ago, I hit a wall. Oh. I mean, I knew I was tired. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I knew I had to stop. That's why I like, you know, cut certain commitments and stuff. And, but, uh, yeah, I hit a wall and, uh, I don't, I have been in, um, <sighs> quite a funk oh the last uh 40 hours well that's let me explain to you why i didn't respond to any of your emails mm. i did see them yep but i, I typing was a challenge for me mm -hmm. right yeah yeah don't yeah no don't worry it's it's i wasn't that doesn't i love tennis mm -hmm. yesterday was a perfect day 25 oh, yeah, 26 yeah. i did not even seek really I thought about it for one second and I thought, oh God, that's just going to, no. Well, no. I am. Um, I've, uh, I've just, uh, I, I have low energy, uh, no appetite, um, all that kind of stuff, but just, um, I'm hardwired for happiness and optimism. There, there, there's no joy. Mm -hmm. The last 48 hours, it's just, it's, it's just been hard. And, we settled the stuff with the insurance. Right. So I thought there would be like a weight lifted. And? And maybe the weight is lifted, but now I'm just realizing how much I've been carrying. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I am, <sighs> this beaver is tired. Yeah, I understand that. Real tired. Uh, so, and uh, my, my beaver, sweetie, bless his heart. Um, has been trying, took me out to dinner, uh, you know, has made lovely meals. Uh, so is this a brain I, chemistry thing that's going on with you? Do you think? I, I think I'm, no, uh, I mean, I guess it is possible. Can Mild depression out. could be. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it is, it, it would be situational probably okay. more because right. I, I, let's not kid ourselves. I, I have been going pretty full steam yeah. uh, for the last little while. And then, you know, you add well, full steam and we've had two things just in the last three months that have mm -hmm. happened that have just, that, you know, the asbestos removal uh, was uh, five digits. That's a lot of money. So that got thrown our way and uh, the car is totaled. Yeah. 
uh, which means there might so be what's another the third one. Thing? They happen in threes, right? What's the third thing? I don't know yet. Well, don't worry about it. You'll be able to deal so, with it. <laughs> but yes, uh, we've had uh, an extra twenty to $25,000 um, this year that we did not plan to spend while we're already taken on debt Which for sucks, renovations. But, but, but let's look at the positive side. <sighs> you could afford to do it. Uh, with loans and grants and stuff yes but what i'm saying is you have access to that right yeah yes yes we, we so you yeah, got you got to i'm trying to put a positive spin no 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 trust me it it's literally just the moment yeah, yeah. is a lot yeah you're just um, feeling overwhelmed it happens yeah you know, overwhelmed and uh so yeah some of the things are like here's a, how would i put it the renovation, the siding and exterior and asbestos part is done. All we need to do is now negotiate to settle the bill, negotiate right. the bill, which is a meeting tomorrow, yeah. uh, which oh, I hope goes smoothly. Yeah. Um, and then everything with the insurance is dealt with except receiving the check. Which is, you know. Like this, but, but it, it will happen. Everything's mm -hmm. in place. But of course, then starts the discussion. Do we get another one? And what kind? And how much? And it's like the whole renovation discussion has been technical. Mm -hmm. And then my beaver sweetie is a scientist. So when I'm proofreading his documents and we're talking about stuff, it's like it's technical. And now we're looking at maybe having to get a car. I don't drive because four cylinder, eight cylinder like this and if it's electric you know this type of battery i don't know a thing i can't contribute to that conversation I, and it's just like i don't want to have to learn <laughs> a whole other Are you old dog new tricks? no no it's it's looking for an electric car it's, it's a whole nother language right yeah i mean so and of course well you know we're a couple well, so an electric car is going to run you 50K minimum. Yeah, but my input is sought. We're, we're looking at a used. Uh, oh, okay. that. But, but my input is sought. But I don't drive. I know nothing about traditional cars. Yeah. So I couldn't your even tell you where to push with the clutch. <laughs> like, there's there's, I don't there's no clutch on an electric car. No, no, I know that. I know that. That I know. <laughs> like this, but on a, on a regular car, right? It was like I, I could never drive manual. They won't let me drive. I'm a menace. I've tried twice. <laughs> I'm terrible you know what? at it. <laughs> this is why we have licensing for, for, for driving cars. Yes. Not, not everybody is meant to drive one, period. It's just a simple matter of fact. I will never get a motorcycle license mm. because I cannot wrap my brain around. Okay, now that's the throttle. Is that the clutch or is that the clutch? I can never remember. Right. Literally. Right. And you give me anything with four, four wheels, no problem. You give me a bicycle, no problem. I'm an yep. ace on, on a, yep. a motorcycle, no. I will kill myself. I know this. I know my limitations and I cannot wrap my brain around. Gear shift is down here on the left. Is it two down, one up or one up or two down? How do I, oh shit, I hit the front brake, not the clutch. I went head over. No. Yeah. Motorcycles are not meant for me. See, that's like, that's like for me and Cur it's gonna sound weird from curling mm -hmm. some people play with a gripper on both feet as they're sweeping and you, you when i learned to play this we put tape on the bottom of the shoe so it was there all the time yes yes so i've tried playing with two grippers to sweep like this every now and I then i go with like this and i try to slide and boom fall flat on my face you know yeah. it's just i just can't unlearn it i can't i don't understand how people do it so yeah it's so I'll, just just to say this like we now have to have a discussions as a couple about what, if we want to get a car, first of all, you know, would it just be cheaper to do virtue car and like rent one when we need like this, or do we want one is new or used electric mm -hmm. or not? If it's electric, then well, when we did the upgrade, we put in 220 so that we could put in an electric charger, but we okay. didn't put in the electric charger because we no, figured we'd still to have a car. <laughs> we figured we'd run this one into the ground first, right? Uh, well, you kind of did. did. 
<laughs> I guess I'm going to laugh about it. It's not that bad. But yes, well, it's, uh, but yeah, like I said, it's just the concept, the concept of having to learn about cars in order to be able to be a good partner for this to be a couple decision. I, I would just rather say, you know what? You just choose whatever you like. I really don't care because so I just don't want my, my I, buddy, I don't to learn a whole other subject. <laughs> my buddy who um, has only been driving for about hmm, 15 years. He's in his 60s now. He he never got a license because he didn't need one because he lived downtown, everything. But then his, his life changed a bit and needed a car. So he got his license, um, you know, in his uh, late 40s, early 50s. I can't remember exactly when. And uh, he's only driven automatic. He doesn't know how to drive a, a stick uh, like most Gen Z. Not millennials. Millennials do know how to drive a stick. Millennials are in their 40s now, okay? So let's get that straight. Gen Z don't know how to drive stick, and it's very difficult to find stick in North America now. Use uh, new cars. Honda stopped making them. Mine was the last. BMW stopped making them, like for the North American market. You just cannot buy a stick shift in this country anymore, which is a shame because I love to drive stick because I feel like I'm driving. Now, that being said, my buddy, for the first time, took uh, his boss's car. They went out for lunch last week, and his boss said, you've never driven this before. He says, no. He says, give it a go. Tesla Model 3, entry-level, basic model. Two motors, not the four. And he says, okay, we've got a nice little straightaway here. He says, hit the gas. What else are you going to call it? You don't right. call it the accelerator. That's right. a mouthful, right? Right. So he hits the gas, and he's like, holy crap. It's Yes, you have instant torque right to the wheels right away. Mm-hmm. So to go from zero to 60, even in the base model, is incredible. After mm-hmm. 60, it's not so much. Okay. Right? Because it doesn't have, it doesn't have the bigger motors. It doesn't have the, the most right. torque. Same thing. Have you ever rented a scooter? Nope. So every now and then, I'll, I'll hop on a bird scooter. And uh, each time, I, I'm like, oh! Because when you hit the accelerator or the gas or whatever you want to call it, uh, you have instant torque, so you go to full speed in like a split second. Okay. And it's like, whoa, it's not that fast actually, but it's because it takes off so quickly. It's right. a bit of a startle. Yeah. So he's noticing that with the electric car, even the most base model, because you have instant torque because the motor's right on the wheels. There's no loss of power. Oh, mm. they're, they're, it's like immeasurable mostly, the loss of power. There's always a a minimal amount of loss, but it's compared to an internal combustion engine. It's night and day. Mm. And anybody who's ever driven an electric car will be like, I did not know you could have that much torque. I've never seen that much torque before. So if you guys get an electric, you will notice that immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so quickly, let's get rolling on the show today because we're we're kind of bantering and babbling and, and trying to get our heads straight over what just took place yesterday. Uh, well, that's and that's the thing that hasn't made it easier. No. <laughs> oh my god! Um, all right. Did um, you see that coming? Because I honestly, the way he was going, I thought, no, he's going to stay in the race. He's going to stay in the race. He's going to stay in the race. I had this bit prepared right. for this show mm-hmm. where I took two Broadway songs and I rewrote some lyrics and mm-hmm. I was going to sing them. Mm-hmm. And they're was, no good anymore. And the one that I had for Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Let's put it this way. <sighs> what they did to that man. Oh yeah. 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 It's freaking unforgivable. Agreed. At the same time, they are calling him the most successful president probably in the last 50 years. Yes. Got more accomplished in one term than many got accomplished in two. Yes. I guess. And considering the opposition he's got. And he came out of the pandemic and, 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 right. This guy deserved better. He did. I agree. Right. Um, so, and the push came from the inside. Mm-hmm. That the calls were coming from inside the house, quite literally. And that's what I said the other day. It's like, I do not understand how the party that has the 34 times felon, mm-hmm. not yet convicted because he hasn't been sentenced, right? technically, 34 times found guilty, because mm-hmm. who is, according to civil courts in New York, a rapist. Yes. 
There's no denying it. Eugene Carroll had him because convicted he, twice and or, three times, twice. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Who ran a charity? That was mm-hmm. a scam. Ran a university. That was a scam. This guy who led an insurrection, this guy has the United Party against him. Behind him. Yeah. I'm, and the most successful pre- doesn't. Yeah. Because he's so old. When the other guy's old, because he's losing a step. When the other guy's lost 50. Like, the, the, and it's been a whole, it's, it's been a drumbeat in the media, and we have the same parallel here in Canada with Justin yeah. Trudeau. Not because he's old, but he's out of a touch. People are just tired of him. People want him to go. It's just that drumbeat constant all it's the time. It's a bullshit time. drumbeat, and I'm sick of hearing it, to be honest with you. I really, I was sick was of it with Biden. Biden. I'm sick of it with Trudeau. I'm sick of it. But the like, thing is, is stop. that. The difference between Canada and the United States is that there's been like one or two people like this within the party, like a couple of mm. MPs going on like this. It hasn't all blown out yet in public like this. But in the United States, right? It was everybody. About like when George Clooney did that thing, yeah. like the fundraising just like dried up. Yeah. Right? And you had Nancy Pelosi, a man, a woman that this man has been behind every freaking step of the way. Yep. Turn it around, go into the news and go, you know, Joe Biden really needs to make a decision. Mm-hmm. When Joe Biden has said like 50 freaking times already, I'm still running. He's like literally saying, and I am telling you, I'm not going. Yeah. This is the best job I've ever known. There's no well. way I'll ever go, darling. There's no way. No, 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 no way. I'm not running this race now. You see, it's, I had the whole thing. Well, throw it out because it's now Kamala Harris. And have you noticed how the fundraising has exploded? Yes. Since you stepped million aside? million. Yeah. In hours. $28 million in small donations in the yeah. first five hours. Unbelievable. Uh, $30 million about... Uh, the Republicans like are shitting their pants right now. Oh, yeah. They Did you up. see Jared Kushner? On, on CNN, or was CNN or Fox, one of them, he was freaking out. They shouldn't be allowed to do this at the last minute. We spent money to campaign against Joe Biden. Now we have to campaign. They, oh, you, you don't like how democracy works, Jared? Is, is that the problem? Or No, it was Stephen Miller, not Jared Kushner. What yeah. am I saying? Stephen Miller. My apologies. Oh, Nosferatu. Sorry, Jared Kushner. You're an arse too, but <laughs> you're less of an arse than, than Miller. Miller's a mm-hmm. hateful arse. You're, you're, you're just mm-hmm. a... A greedy arse. There's a difference. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and Miller was literally freaking out. Why are they allowed to do it's called democracy? They're allowed to do this. Mm. There's no rules against it. There's no statement against it. It's unprecedented in the United States of America, but it's been done in other democracies for centuries. So you don't like it? Well, it was Joe's right to, to step aside, which he has done. And Kamala Harris, I think, is about to lead a uh a majority government. Uh, I think she's going to win. Uh, oh, don't, 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 don't be so sure. It's not going to be that easy. I think she's going to win. You know why? She's going to get the female vote. Even... Oh, don't, 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 don't interpret this as a, I don't believe she can win. Oh, no. Interpret I think this as, win. don't interpret this as a Republicans are going to do everything to make sure she can't even be on the ticket first before. Well, they- but they won't be able to prevent a damn thing. They will try, but they can't do anything. They've got the Supreme Court. Yeah, I know. There are no rules anymore. This is not the same game. Exactly, which means Joe Biden, who is the king of the United States of America, could just say, she's the, she's the candidate. Fuck you. <laughs> right? I mean, literally, they've given him that power. Mm-hmm. It's about to backfire in their faces. So, um... Why doesn't yeah. he just appoint her next queen? <laughs> I mean, doesn't he have the power to do that right now? I, I guess so. I mean, there, listen, I do not know how this works, but like, listen, there are no rules, but the six, the five, because even um, Amy Coney Barrett didn't mm-hmm. side with the five, uh, didn't side with uh, some of the men on on a few things, um, but the five Republican male appointed justices on the Supreme Court mm-hmm. 
are the ones that have said, we will decide ultimately whether something is an official act or not an official act, which then creates the situation like whenever a Republican president says something terrible, mm -hmm. etc. oh, well, that was an official act. And whenever a Democrat, assuming that there is ever another Democrat president ever again, yes, oh, well, no, no, that's not an official act. Mm -hmm. The way that things are set up is that these five men get to decide what's official and wasn't, what's, what's not official. And given that they just freaking grabbed the founding fathers by the pussy on presidential immunity and kings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's completely arbitrary. It's completely arbitrary. And then on the presidential side, should a Republican get in, you get the situation where, hey, I want to do something illegal. I want to have my, my political entities rounded up or killed. Well, that's illegal. I'm ordering you to do it. Well, that's illegal. Don't worry. I'll pardon you. Pardon you is my sole discretion, constitutional discretion. And that is not even to be questioned according to that. So go ahead. Literally, they have set things up for the White House to be the seat of crime, to be a mafia organization. And those five judges decide what is and what isn't official. And for a lot of stuff, in that decision, they just turned around and they said, oh yeah, uh, if, if it's within your core presidential powers, we don't need to look at that at all, ever. Ever. While also at the same time in another decision saying, hey, all you regulatory bodies, yeah, um, we're the experts now. <laughs> but that's literally what they've created for themselves. So uh, it, it, it's a dangerous situation. So you have Biden, who was going to stay, and then being pushed by everyone, and literally everyone, Pelosi, Schumer, um, donors uh, started uh, cutting off the funds. Yes. So basically, they all pushed him. Oh, yes. And there's this thing, there's an article that was spotted uh, by people uh, at the Daily Beans, which I, I consider our mother show. Mm -hmm. um, and um, see I'm going all off because there's a whole bunch of things but one of the reasons this happened it seems has to do with ratings there was an uh, article uh, in CNN itself and I can't remember what it is now oh darn I had pulled it up this morning and I had forgotten it, uh, paid for ratings. CNN ratings dropped 96% causing CNN. There we go. After the president's, after the presidential debate, the CNN's ratings had cratered, uh, 92, 96%. Basically the situation that happened is that nobody wanted to watch the rerun. And media was getting killed. And basically, they were convinced that there was no way in hell that the Republicans would ditch their candidate for being old. Right. Not all up there. So, they started the Biden a soul thing. And they beat the drum, 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 and they beat the drum. Now that drum had started before, but the debate thing just really then kicked it into high gear. Because people just said, you know, oh, well, this is over, this is done. And um, so they basically eliminated Biden. They got the whole drum beat because they wanted someone younger and fresher and newer and more interesting to cover. Yeah. This was a coup. It was an internal coup for media. We are bored with the people that we have to cover. Here we go. CNN. 
by Oliver Darcy. Shakeups in the 2024 race provided much needed jolt in interest for news outlets. This is CNN writing about it itself, telling on itself. Mm. After months of tuning out, what had been a fairly predictable and uneventful race between the two party incumbents, recent earth shaking events have upended the state of politics, adding an unexpected wrinkle to the storyline and prompting audiences to turn their attention to the high stakes showdown between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. In other words, the 2024 drought appears to be over as Americans show renewed interest in a race that has suddenly been thrown into upheaval. In recent weeks, tens of millions of people thirsty for information have turned to news organizations for coverage of the consequential CNN presidential debate and its aftermath, the attempted assassination of Trump, and the Republican National Convention. The CNN debate averaged 51 million viewers, networks averaged about 19 million viewers after Trump was shot, and the first night of the RNC averaged 18 million viewers. On digital platforms, numbers have also traveled upwards with the major events sending spikes to our traffic to news organizations. To be clear, the television ratings and interest generated by the twist in terms of the 2024 election have not been historic by any means, even though the events are. Viewership is relatively in line with years past, if not a bit lower. They did all of this to get just a bit lower than they were in years past. That's how bad the ratings were. That's how bad they were tanking. That's pretty bad. But the startling news cycle has unquestionably breathed life into what had been a sleepy race offering jolts to the system. Last week, as the news cycle took yet another abrupt turn, the cable news networks topped both primetime and total day viewership across cable, posting double-digit percentage increases over last month on uh, on MSNBC, uh, the day after Donald Trump, uh, the assassination attempt who happened. Uh, Morning Joe was canceled because they said that they were going to be doing breaking news feed for like constantly mm-hmm. for like, and like didn't for the next part. 48 hours. Uh, prior to the presidential debate, which set off alarm bells over Biden's acuity and stamina, audience levels had hovered at lows with the most of the country, sorry, with most of the country opting against investing their time following incremental updates on a race that many had already made up their minds about. But with Biden's 2024 future now in serious doubt, this was written a couple of days ago, uh, and Trump having just survived an attempt on his life, Americans are standing to attention eager to learn what comes next. This offers a glimmer of good news for the media industry, which usually enjoys surges in audience levels and advertising revenue during major election seasons, and it is especially welcome this year with media organizations struggling amid a difficult business environment. Are you freaking kidding me right now? No. (laughs) No. I'm just... Ah. So, that's happened. And the reason why I sort of said "Eh," about Harris, it's not that she can't do the job. It's not that she's not good. In fact, there are some polls that have been recently that recently came out that was show, showing that um, you know she was actually performing a little better than Biden head to head. Did you did you know that in 2016 Donald Trump donated to her when she was a uh, yes <laughs> yes 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 and so. For example, the NP- NPR PBS Marist poll had Biden leading Trump 50 to 48. It was the only one of the four majors in which he was leading this. Harris leads 50 to 49, so it's a slightly wider margin. But if you look at the CBS News YouGov poll, Biden was trailing by five points, Trump 47 to 52 in that one. And this one, Harris Trump, it's 48 51, so it's three. So in th- it shows. There's a little bit of a gap. It shrinks a little, but there wasn't much difference. This is between July 7th and July uh, 21st. Mm -hmm. Uh, The numbers are about the same. Um, But where it becomes interesting is if you look deeper into the data. So according to this article, uh, before the assassination attempt, both the president and Harris trailed Trump by two-point margins among the registered voters. Though the actual percentages for each candidate was slightly different. Trump led Biden 45 to 43, while he took 47 to Harris's 45. In their matchup, both ballot tests fell within the poll's margin of error. Um, 
and then you get into uh, the other things, like for example, within the black community. Harris slightly outperformed Biden among black voters, leading Trump among this demographic by 64 points, 78 to 14, which compares to Biden's 57 point lead among black voters, 69 to 12. So there's a seven point difference there that where she has an advantage. And the black community is particularly important to the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. They organize. Right. On the other hand, the NBC News poll showed that Trump doing slightly better among white voters when matched up with Harris instead of Biden, leading her by 16 points rather than 14. So he gets a little bump. It's only 2% more. Whereas the, Republic, whereas the Democrats get about 7% more among the black community. Yes, but Trump will get 2% more among whites. Uh, one of the biggest differences goes beyond demographics, and this is when we're talking about registered voters specifically. Uh, among the roughly one quarter of Republican registered voters in the poll who said they were unsatisfied with Trump as the GOP's nominee, Trump ran ahead of Biden by 46.6317. But when Trump's opponent was Harris, most of, more of these dissatisfied GOP voters flocked to Trump. The Republicans' lead within that group grew to 57 points. So among so that's the racism factor here. Mm -hmm. Among registered Republicans, it's like, eh, you know, some of them may have chosen the couch instead. But oh my God, if the other if the president might be a black woman, well, that, yeah, we're gonna vote. So there's 11 points difference there, All right? So it's uh, the fact that she's black and female, and also, you know, let's not forget uh, part Asian. Uh, all those things uh, are probably going to, uh, you know, everybody that's worried about white replacement. Mm, all that kind of is, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Look, right? the white replacement theory makes me chuckle. Even if it were true, who gives a shit? Really? I know. How is this going to affect you? It's not. not. Get over it. Mm. Get over it. Huh. That, one just, just, that one just kills me. That It's like the stupidest damn thing I've ever heard. It's inevitable that we're all going to be some shade of brown. Yeah. And then the other type of voter is uh, what they call third-party interested voters. People that are interested in, were interested really in neither Trump or Biden. So in a head-to-head -head matchup, Trump took 32% and Biden took 31%. You add that up, that's 63. So that means a plurality had decided to make a two-way choice, saying that they were either undecided or would pick another candidate or something else. When Harris was the choice against Trump, more of the respondents made a pick in the two-way ballot test. The vice president went ahead of Trump among these other voters, 46 to 39%, suggesting a higher upside with voters currently considering a third-party candidate. Mm -hmm. That's kind of very, very important. Uh, and then, uh, the other, uh, part uh, for some reason, I don't see it in here, but I, I remember I read it. Uh, I think the other, the other group of course is, uh, independence. And I believe, uh, when I was reading, uh, the article, not for some reason, it's not here. Uh, Harris was doing better with independence, uh, than Biden. Mm -hmm. So and that's, that's the middle that they're trying to swing. So even though the top line numbers don't seem to show much difference, um, that could be uh, in the key things, in the, that, mush, that, that mushy middle that needs to swing, that, that is open to swinging one way or the other, she does better. Well, did, did you know that uh, uh, recently on an episode of whatever the program is called that Sean Hannity is on, he tried to make hay out of the fact that she supported a bill or tabled a bill and supported Bernie Sanders or vice versa. I can't remember the exact details of it where she wanted to go for single payer health care like we have here in Canada, hmm. which, by the way, she grew up under because she went to school in Montreal. Her mother right. worked, her mother, a doctor, a physician, worked at uh, Jewish General Hospital in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So she understands how our system works. So right. she supported Bernie Sanders. And Sean Hattie was like, she tried to get a single payer health care system up here or down here. I'm like, you mean like the rest of the civilized democratic world has that thing? Yep. They're the only nation on earth of the, well, shit, G100, if you will. <laughs> That has a for-profit healthcare system solely. 
the only one all civilized no that's not the word all democracies around the world have some sort of universal health care system or another some have two tier but the two tier one like that they have in switzerland is designed that the public health care system gets funding and gets propped up and gets supported so that if you if you want to pay for private you can but most people don't because mm -hmm. the public health care system there is very very good yeah meanwhile we've got idiots in this country and i say idiots because they're biting off their nose cutting off their nose despite their own face trying to privatize health care but it's that only benefits like what a few billionaires which which by the way if you're a billionaire you don't need any more money I saw something just yesterday about how somebody says you get to $999 million. That's it. All the billions, anything you earn after that goes right to the public purse and we give you an award. Congratulations. You've won capitalism. You don't need more money. We do. You don't. Mm -hmm. So when they try and privatize our, our system in this country and they're trying to do it little by little, step by step, incrementally, including what they're doing to the LCBO, and remember, what's happening there is, uh, well, it's, it's a little suspect, if you ask me, because of the fact that look who is, uh, look who is on the board here. Uh, let me just put this on the screen for you so you can see it. For those of you who don't know, because I am going somewhere with this. For those of you who don't know, Stephen Harper, sitting on Quebec Alimentation Couchetard Board since March 2024, which owns the U.S. company Circle K who got most of the private licenses for alcohol sales in Ontario. Nomination happened during Ford's process of privatization, like Dracula, Harper always comes back. So they are trying to bring in uh, Americanized privatization to healthcare and liquor sales and destroy our institutions that send tax dollars to the benefit of the public purse. Kamala Harris is trying to do the opposite of that by trying to bring in a, a public health care universal single payer system like we have here in Canada that we have former politicians and current politicians are trying to destroy. She's doing the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who gets it. This is a woman who will do what she can to make things better for every American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. I was wondering where you were going there with that for a bit, but yeah. Okay. I see it. I know it looks like a tangent, but I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm okay. doing. Okay. Okay. I see note, that. I'm going to grab a coffee. I'll be right back. All right. Uh, now, um, the issue with this, actually, you know what? Before we do that, just because this is really how I should have opened. Uh, was by reading uh, the resignation letter, uh, not the resignation letter, but the step-down letter of uh, President Biden. Uh, July 21st, 2024. My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. We've made historic investments in rebuilding our nation, in lowering prescription drug costs for seniors, and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once-in-a-century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and pursued preserved our democracy, and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president, and while it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me re-elected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being extra, an extraordinary partner in all this work, and let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember we are the United States 
of America. Uh, so he posted that at uh, 1.46 p.m. yesterday. And then, not long after, because people started wondering, you know, does that you know, he do? It was like, does that mean that he will uh, endorse Kamala Harris at 2.13 p.m.? So, <laughs> actually, <laughs> so not that long after, my fellow Democrats, I have decided not to accept the nomination and to focus all my energies on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. My very first decision as the party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president, and it's been the best decision I've made. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and beat Trump. Let's do this. So, the thing, why it was a little, when Mr. Grizzly was saying, she's got it. Um, this definitely puts her as the front runner, but uh, the convention hasn't taken place yet. And because Biden is no longer uh, in the running to be the candidate, mm -hmm. um, his delegates are uh, are free to do as they would. Um, now, technically, the ticket that all the delegates voted for was a Biden-Harris ticket. Correct. So at least people voted for her in the case of the Republicans because the you know Trump decided he was going to wait until the convention to nominate his uh, to name his uh, vice presidential candidate. Nobody has actually expressed votes. For JD Vance, but for Kamala Harris, there has been. Um, so that does give her some legitimacy. But the party's rules require that uh, to, the delegates vote on their leadership candidate either virtually prior to the convention on August 7th or at the upcoming convention on the 19th. And uh, the plan originally was to do have votes done virtually so that Biden would be declared the nominee around the 7th and then just do the acceptance on the 19th rather than. But now you've got... The question is whether or not you're going to have a race or not. Whether or not people are just going to accept or somebody's going to run to try and run against them. Um, and the thing that uh, makes me a little antsy, and I don't know if they're just not doing this because they don't want to put their thumbs on the scale or not, but... Um, Nancy Pelosi, after, you know, recognizing Joe Biden for all the wonderful things, now that he is stepping on making room, she's a little two-faced, considering that she pushed him out. Uh, but she did not endorse Kamala Harris. There's a lot of top Democratic leaders in Congress who have stopped short of endorsing Harris. Now, she has picked up tons of endorsements. Senator Amy Klobuchar has, uh, the Clintons have, um, different unions, organizations. As you can see, the money started coming in again. Um, so there's, uh, there's absolutely no lack of people uh, rushing to endorse her. But... Uh, the question is whether or not anyone's going to run against her. Somebody's going to have to do it quickly, and it seems that there is one person who might be, and you'll never guess who the frick it is. Who's that? Joe Manchin. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> we They just got rid of one Joe. Yeah. This is not your moment, buddy. And so the most Republican of the Democrats is thinking maybe this is his chance. And here's the other thing that's going on, if you've been paying attention to the New York Times. They published an editorial saying that Trump is unfit, finally. Because if you've been looking at the coverage of the New York Times, the actual news coverage this has been really trashing Biden mm -hmm. crazy. I guess and almost like making the case for Trump, and then said Trump is unfit. Well, there have been two editorials that have, had, that have, that have been published. One of them's from Aaron Sorkin, the writer of the West Wing. And you know what he suggests? The Democrats should be really bold and recruit Mitt Romney. 
Um, and, and you know what? I don't think that's outrageous because Mitt Romney, did you see his statement regarding Absolutely. Biden? Yes. It, it, it was reminiscent of... of um, John McCain. Thank you. Yes, uh, we, we don't see eye to eye on a lot of policies and we argue about a lot of things, but I have a great deal of respect for this man. And, and one of the things Romney said was, I am not this new breed of Republican. I'm an old school Republican. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, again, I didn't see eye to eye with their policies, but at least I could respect that they respected the rule yes. of law, the Constitution, how things work. Yes, absolutely. And, and Romney is like that. Is Romney a great guy? Well, you know what? Compared to the current nominee for president in the Republican Party, yeah, Romney is a great guy. <laughs> yeah. But, so you see that. And then the other thing, uh, oh, what was the other one? I had it. No, I lost it. Ah, oh, darn. Uh, Can't remember. Uh, but all these things is like, why is everybody proposing that there be a race between two Republicans? I don't know. I don't so know. They're literally suggesting that the Democratic Party pick a former Republican or Joe Biden say, here's the time for the most Republican of the Democrats to run for the leadership. And like I said, there was, there was another story. I can't, I, can, I wish I could remember it off the top of my head. It was also in New York Times, another person that they were suggesting could be the person like this, which is like another damn Republic. What, what the hell? In all honesty, I think uh, their best bet would be to have uh, Pete Buttigieg on the ticket because the Republicans are scared shitless of that guy because have you seen him every time he's on Fox News? Yep. He well, eviscerates that, them, but he does yep. so politely in a calm and measured tone. Yep. And that's the other thing that becomes then who becomes the vice president if she gets it. But here's the thing is... The Democrats, right, who had the reason to have every single, every single advantage going into this election. They had a president that had done the most. They had, you know, a diverse ticket. Trump is an unsympathetic figure, right? Then all of a sudden, the Supreme Court does something unexpected. Well, expected or unexpected, but does go so far wide and makes it king that Judge Eileen Cannon drops the documents case, which was the one that's most likely for him to be, you know, convicted mm -hmm. because I mean, he did take the documents and he wouldn't give them back. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of open and shut. Uh, and then he did a whole bunch of other stuff too. So you've got those two things going on. And then all of a sudden, you know, in a good economy and numbers are going to get better. Interest rates are going to start going down. Inflation's being curved, whatnot, right? He's all set. And then all of a sudden, all of this drama, and everything's being upended. And now the Democrats basically go in disarray, this remove their leader, force them out. And now you're going to tell me this, that you are considering having a race when you have the first black woman? Considering what the black mm -hmm. community did to get you Biden as president in the first place, like this, you're, you're even going to entertain this concept? Well, I, I think a, a, a Buttigieg Harris ticket would not only be monumental, you could have a, a woman of color, a woman of color. Two things there as president. And the vice president is a married gay man. Yes, with children. With children, that would have the heads explode of every. Who can't speak to evangelicals? Yes, <laughs> it would. It, it would have heads exploding, and I am so here for it. Well, same here. I mean, I said the same thing. You know, she has to pick. But there are, like, for example, if she picks Senator Mark Kelly, for example, he's from Arizona. If she picks Governor Josh Shapiro, he's from Pennsylvania. It's a swing state, right? Mm -hmm. There's a, you know, so there's other considerations. You know, and then everybody's like, oh, I don't know if people are going to be ready to vote for a black woman. I don't know. Black woman again. Ooh, that's, so, you know, when I'm sitting there, freaking make some heads explode. Go get the kids, right? <laughs> Go get the youth vote. Uh, show that you're changing. Another thing people are considering, how about an all-female ticket with Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan? Now, Whitmer and Newsom have both said that they 
uh, on the record before all this happened, saying that they weren't interested in being a vice presidential nominee uh, should Joe Biden have to leave. So I don't know if they're considering maybe throwing their hat in the ring for the leadership itself. Right? But if we get to the point, it's like, oh, wait a minute. We have a chance for a black female president? Well, she's the outgoing president endorses her? And other people are going to throw their hat in the ring to make it a cut? You're going to lose so many people? You're going to lose so many people. Mm. Because, but it's just, you know, you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, there's been enough turmoil already. Let's just put Kamala in, let her choose her VP, make it nice and orderly, and all, you know, go shoulder to shoulder behind her and let's do this thing. If some, because there's always got to fucking be one, right? Always. So I want to run. Even like Joe Biden, when he was running like this, still Marianne Williamson and another person still decided like this. Technically, there was a primary. There were other candidates. But I mean, like there's always got to be one. So it's just like, do not do this to your base strategically. Do not create another avenue of on the news. Oh, somebody threw in a, is this racism? Do they want to get rid of it? They want to make sure that the woman doesn't get it. They want to make sure that the black person doesn't get it. They want to make sure that the East Asian, not the East Asian, but the part Asian person is like this. That's you. All that's going to do is start that off. Well, come on. Just hand the torch. Kamala is black and South Asian. Right? Yes. South Asian. Yes. And her husband is Jewish. And Pete Buttigieg is a gay married man with children. You're checking off all the boxes. I know it's not a checklist, but I mean, it would have heads exploding. The most diverse ticket by far. Ever. Ever. Oh. Now, and, and Buttigieg isn't even on the ticket yet, but I think he should be. And don't be surprised if you find him there. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I, I, and a lot of Democrats are calling for it, and I can understand why. He's smart. He's the most effective communicator they got. By far. He will go where Republicans are and speak to them. Yeah. He's not well, a how many times he, he appears on Fox News frequently. Oh, yeah. And and every time he does, I'm like, why do you keep having him back? He just destroyed you. But he does it in such a polite, kind, non-condescending, and, and informative non manner. Yep. Non-confrontational, non-condescending, informational. Like yes. he, he, he's just, he's a great communicator, yeah. period. And interesting from Pete Buttigieg, July 21st, 2024. Joe Biden has earned his place among the best and most consequential presidents in our history. Americans are much better off because of his leadership and accomplishments. He always puts our country first and he de as he demonstrated today, and I know he will continue to do so for the rest of his term. Kamala Harris is now the right person to take up the torch, defeat Donald Trump, and succeed Joe Biden as president. I have seen her extraordinary leadership firsthand, working closely with her during the 2020 campaign and then in the historically effective Biden-Harris administration. I will do all that I can to help her win this election to lead America forward as our next president. Oh, I, I Secretary think. of Transportation has already endorsed. Instantly endorsed. Yes. Yes. So, you know, interesting. I, I think he's going to be on the ticket, but it, what Saucy Seawitch is saying here won't lie kind of want to see katie porter and her whiteboard yeah. you imagine? <laughs> you imagine? Boy, oh, like boy. oh boy if you come for katie porter you best be prepared because hey. she is armed to the teeth with facts and numbers and knows her shit and the here's best the one i ever saw the best one i yes. ever saw was when she was debating with a well not she was trying to inform a guy and he said something to the effect, well, according to this book, blah, 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 blah. She goes, he goes, do you know anything about it? She goes, yeah, I wrote it. Yeah. And it was like silence. No, no, that's my book. I wrote it. I know about economics. Don't try and teach her what she already knows. Yep. I love it when they, when they try and pull that stunt. Well, according to this book, you're wrong. No, I wrote that book. Yeah, that's, that's me who did that. I, I was the one. Thank Flip you. it over. See. Yeah. <laughs> next page look at the next page you That's stopped you didn't read the whole thing clearly because if you look at the next page you'll see it supports what i'm saying right here right now in front of you and if you look another, on the flap on the inside cover you will see my picture 
(laughs) My picture is on the damn book. Another rich old white man trying to mansplain shit to Uh, a vastly intelligent, uh, an accomplished woman who knows her shit, who, by the way, is a single mother who had struggled for a very long time. She admittedly struggled. She says, I know what it's like to balance a budget when you've got no ba- budget to balance. So for her as, uh, uh, I, I think, appoint her as, as the uh, supreme being of economic policy. <laughs> She's somebody who would really get things done to help help the downtrodden. Yep. Right? Yes. Yep. She would. So should Harris get the nomination, this is, the part that I'm finding really exciting, you know, it's like, can you imagine the place that a Jasmine Crockett would play in that campaign? Mm. Casio Cortez. Oh yeah. And, and I, I saw something mm. recently from AOC and people are really going, you know, I was not a big fan of hers before, but I am now. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of people lately come up and say that. And I'm like, well, I, I guess well, she's it. shown she could be reasonable. Like this, I mean, she is on the more left of the party. Yes, she she wasn't a big fan of Biden at the start. No, she wasn't. And she had his back. She was one of the people that was saying, "No, you, you get, this is the guy who brought us. He's been the most progressive." Like I'm backing him. And everybody thought, "Whoa, wait a minute! You're not so militant that you're not willing to." Oh, okay. And I think she gained a lot of respect there. Yeah. Um. All right. So I think that's about all uh, I have for that. Um, sorry, it came out as a bit of a mess and a, and a jumble uh, mm, yeah, on my part. No, because you just never knew where to start, right? I could have started with the resignation. There's just so many angles all at once. Yeah, so it's right? difficult to nail it all down in um, one shot. But this is, um, I mean, to me, it's a coup. Mm-hmm. Because it's soft coup. Um, yes. But nevertheless, uh, the guy was running, wanted to run, I guess, and uh, got pushed out. Now, the one thing uh, that that still hasn't, um, don't know how that will change the debate schedule or if it will, because there is a more debates scheduled. Uh, but since he was going to debate twice against Biden and would only debate once against the next person, will they do it again? I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Ronald Rumpros uh, was his usual classy self uh, upon hearing the news. Uh, so, uh, so much for unity, y'all. Uh, and <laughs> that did not, I, I won't even bother reading it. It was just a, a that unity a, statement a, lasted about a day. If yeah, that. It was verbal diarrhea and just, just a screed. Um, well, uh, so let's, let's, his whole unity thing. Uh, after the attempt on my life when I was shot in the ear, Okay, you, you weren't shot in the ear. You were hit by a piece of plexiglass from a teleprompter because if you well, were shot in the ear with an AR-15 bullet, it would have torn it off completely. You wouldn't have a scratch. You wouldn't have an ear anymore. This has already been demonstrated. So, and, and that's the other thing that was going on with all of this, right? Um, it had been many, 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 many um, There had been many requests for the medical report. Somebody yeah, tried to assassinate the president. Nobody's seen it yet. And then because uh, uh, Biden came down with COVID, we're getting notes about the state of his condition, how it's progressing, what his prognosis is, but still nothing with regard to Trump. So yesterday, um, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, Ronnie Jackson the former White House attending physician to the president, to the former president, and he mm-hmm. was former for a reason because he had the nickname the Candy Man because he was a bit of a pill pusher. Yeah. Uh, he was the one that said that Trump could live up to 200, 200 years old if he just stopped eating hamburgers or cheeseburgers or something. Yeah, that guy. So that guy put out a report saying, I've seen the president and like, oh, he's also lost his license to practice in a couple of places. 
Yeah, he's a little. Uh, I've seen the president like this, and you know he's got this thing, and the bullet passed like a couple millimeters from his face, like six or seven millimeters more, and he would have gotten it if his face wasn't turned, and all that kind of stuff. And yes, there's lots of blood, and like this, and he has a um, a bit of a, a chip that, or like a, a little laceration or something, you know, the little piece that's missing or something. Um. There have been no medical reports. Have been hardly any attempts to view the medical team, whatnot, like this. But on the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell, um, there was a small little thing, uh, a little clip where they got, I think, a small. They must well. They did have an interview with a doctor. I think his name is David. Uh, Reading House or something like mm-hmm. that, who was the uh, emergency physician on duty at the time. And there's, it's only a little clip. It's like 22 seconds. Um, but he said that the president didn't need stitches. The former president, should say Mr. Trump, should just say Mr. Trump, uh, didn't need stitches. Um, so... Here it is, Mr. Grizzly. I'll give it to you if you could put it up there. Sure thing. There you go. Uh, got this. I found this from a uh, guy, Alex Cole, on Twitter. Uh, but it is from the CBS News because I went to, uh, and it's authentic. I went to go look at the episode of the CBS News that this one was from, and this was it, to see if there was more after I had heard this. But it literally is it. That's the only thing. Mm hmm. So, and that's the only thing I've been able to find. I've tried to find an interview with this guy. I've tried to find like nothing, this. Nothing. nothing. That's the only thing. So somebody he disappeared. Said, this guy. I don't know, but this guy managed to get an interview with him somehow. The guy mm. did this, but they only used about twenty, like one little couple seconds. The former president was treated at Butler Memorial Hospital. He did not require stitches. When I heard the call, you're thinking worst case scenario. Dr. David Roddinghouse says his staff coordinated with the Secret Service well in advance of the rally. It was surreal. Um, you know, you prepare for things like this, you don't necessarily prepare to receive a president or former president. He didn't need stitches. <laughs> Right, lending more credence to the fact that it was a piece of shrapnel because you know for sure that had he like actually, you know, been grazed by a bullet like this, he'd have that medical report and he'd be holding it upside down like a Bible. Yeah, it's literally it would have torn his ear completely off. But it would have been all over, right? The mm-hmm. copy of that that report, right? So, um, but they're pushing a Trump literally took a bullet for American narrative. So, I mean, if there's a medical report that says that the bullet didn't touch him, that was really a piece of shrapnel kind of mm-hmm. kind of kills that story, right? Well, I got something interesting for you. Um, it's, it's sort of an aside, but it, it's directly related to what we're talking about. It says, now that Trump is officially the oldest presidential candidate ever, I expect the media to spend weeks focusing on his age and his mental capacity. <laughs> well, that's, that's where it flips, right? I got to give credit where credit is due. This is from Black Knight 10K. Yep. Um, yep. That's pretty pretty uh, brilliant because yeah he's spot on he is spot on when, when does when does that start will it start it should start because uh, he ain't wrong <laughs> right so uh he ain't, wrong. he ain't wrong but that's so that, that that's what's going to be interesting it's going to see whether or not the news coverage changes to cover every single one now of trump's gaffes yeah now Here's a, a little interesting thing, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, from Kamala Harris's. Um, and what might that be? Twitter feed. Uh, there we go. This is what I'm looking forward to Let's while I'm talking about the debates. There we go. I prosecuted sex predators. Trump is one. I shut down for-profit scam colleges. He ran one. I held big banks accountable. He's owned by them. I'm not just prepared to take on Trump. I'm prepared to beat him. Oh, sister's sister's not, she she came to play. So we basically (laughs) have uh, a situation of the 
a prosecutor versus the predator. And given that the Supreme Court of the United States has pretty much told us all that we are not going to get a trial date, because that debate might be the first and only time in front of a camera that that further mucker faces a lawyer. Mm. A lot of people are going to be watching that debate. Should that yeah. happen? Um, I, I'm, I'm going to have some popcorn and some drinks and maybe a beer or two, possibly. I think um, when, whenever it happens, assuming that it does, uh, I, I think it's going to kick some serious butt. Because, <laughs> I mean, look, he was no match for, for uh, Hillary Clinton, but he you know, tried to bully his way through that debate. And I had, to, I had to shut it down because there was no moderation on it. Like, I was in Geneva at the time on vacation and I got up at like, I don't know, some ungodly hour to watch the debate. And it was look, literally 30 minutes in. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I got to get out because the moderators weren't doing anything to control Trump. They let him run rampant. I want, remember that moderator we showed not too long ago? Yeah, yes, yeah. That's not an answer to the question. You clearly yep. have no answer. We're moving on. Yep. That is how you moderate a debate. That is how you do it. Literally, you were posed a question, you refused to answer it. We're moving on. We're not wasting any more time here. That is not an answer to the question. We are moving on. Next up is, that is how you do it. So you, you just sent me an, an ad from uh, Kamala Harris from now 2020. This, yes. And let's have this a look. Is, at this. this is from 2020. Right. So this is four years ago. And uh, let's, just, let's just have a watch of this, shall we? this well think about this he's a world leader in temper tantrums she never loses her cool she prosecuted sex predators he is one grabbed by the she shut down for profit colleges that swindled americans he was a for-profit college at trump university we teach success literally he's owned by the big banks she's the attorney general who beat the biggest banks in america and force them to pay homeowners $18 billion. He's tearing us apart. She'll bring us together. This is Trump. And in every possible way, this is the anti-Trump. So if that's what you're looking for in your next president, there's really only one. Kamala. Sick of this? Wow. Well, think about this. She could recycle that. Yeah, just recycle it. I mean, why not? It ain't wrong. She could recycle that. Word for word, verbatim. There's no need to even... Just, look, let's save... I'm going to save us some money, folks. I already have it. It's right here. Just roll it. It's from four years ago. Uh, the only thing that's changed is he's a, a 34 felony counts that he... <laughs> he hasn't been um, sentenced yet. He's been convicted, but he hasn't been sentenced. Oh, man. All right. We'll see what happens next uh, in that front. It's going to be interesting. Uh, at home, uh, kids and cubs, uh, because normally we start with the, the wildfire stuff. And, um, well, I mean, this was big, big, massive international news. So, you know, uh, we decided to do that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I have some crowd strikes up, but yeah, let's, let's do the, the wildfire, uh, thing here. Okay. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of extra time this morning. I know I'm on vacation, but I'm on vacation. <laughs> I have a lot of editing work to do today. Today will be the one work day this week for me, where I'm going to try and get all the edits out of the way, get everything up to date on the audio version that we have. And, uh, yeah, I got, I've got like seven or eight hours worth of work ahead of me and uh bridget is on her way over here shortly and i have to take out lola soon so uh, we're gonna have to wrap up shortly and tomorrow we can do a, we can do a bigger bit more of a deep dive into this but uh, i do have limited time today unfortunately okay uh all right uh get some cabs i guess that's the end of this episode of the, the daily beaver morning show 
Uh, we hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. Uh, if you would like to support us and make sure that you do not miss an episode, um, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. Uh, she has sponsored our pod page, podpage.com slash uh, the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, if you press subscribe there, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. If you would like to help us in other ways, please go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page and uh, click on our buttons there, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate when you do that. Or you can go to our coffee page, which is the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head, coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And there you will find the Emergency Hydration Fund. Uh, if you would like to support us and encourage us to do more, we would really appreciate that. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. TrueNorthEagerBeaver at gmail.com is our email address. You can write to us at TrueEager. Leave a comment on our YouTube page or on our Facebook page as well. We appreciate that. We try to read absolutely everything. If demo uh, Because democracy is something that you do, um, please uh, write letters to your MPs. Uh, to make clear what it is that you want known, and also your provincial representatives. Uh, it's always very important. And uh, if you have an opportunity, uh, please support the Wheelchair Basketball Program by going and uh, buying one of their nifty and very, very stylish uh, T-shirts. And hopefully I'll be able to put the link in uh, the chat for you again today before we go. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? Uh, words of wisdom today. Uh, despite the uh, shakeup we've seen in the U.S. political spectrum, and despite the uh, hounding by Canadian media for our current prime ministers to step down, which we all think is sort of a right-wing media pundit gang up despite all of that i'm still able to smile through it all because i know at the end of the day nobody's going to be able to take anything away from me and i hope you realize that too now that could change in the future and i hate to say it it's it's an absolute possibility and i hope that is not the case but it, it is possible that 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 things could be taken away from us and by that i'm going to show you something here um that that um well this is uh, uh, from um uh, margaret atwood she's making a comment on something somebody else said and i'm saying right now nobody's taking anything away from you you have to be ever vigilant never cautious because in the future it's possible rita mead at screwy decimal tweeted you know in the handmaid's tale flashback scenes where everything still feels kind of normal but they start dropping small hints that shit is starting to go very wrong very soon we're in that part right now but with really big fucking hints mm -hmm. to which margaret atwood responds ahem mm -hmm. so yes. breathe easy for now remember to be ever vigilant and get out and vote Mm -hmm. I saw another thing saying, you know, it's, we're not, uh, uh, what is it? It's, we're not falling into autocracy or whatnot. We're being like deliberately marched into it. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. All right, Mr. Grizzly. But yes, yes, try to smile. And, try sorry, to smile. I ended it on a downer. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, please roll the, uh, not roll the credits, cue the cock. There we go. <laughs> you are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind.
We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. So I have a quick Easter egg for you. I understand you have one too. I'm going to show you this one quick because this relates to how we started the top of the show. And I think you'll find it very interesting because it's something that we need to do in this country, which we're not doing. So this is from Secretary uh, Pete Buttigieg. We have received reports of continued disruptions and unacceptable customer service conditions at Delta Airlines, including hundreds of complaints filed with the U.S. Department of Transportation. I have made clear to Delta that we will hold them to all applicable passenger protections. Delta must provide prompt refunds to consumers who choose not to take rebooking, free rebooking for those who do, and timely reimbursements for food and hotel stays to consumers affected by these delays and cancellations, as well as adequate customer service assistance. No one should be stranded at an airport overnight or stuck on hold for hours waiting to talk to a customer service agent. If any airline fails to honor its customer service requirements, let us know. And he then provides the website that you can do that to. And here's the comment from our friend David Mosscrop. If this were in Canada, we'd just give them a bailout. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, started the show by saying my flight was delayed by two and a half hours and they charged me $68 to check. By the way, right. my bag was a carry on. Hmm. I checked it because I had a shoulder bag and I had a, a bag with some goodies that I, you know, souvenirs and that sort of thing. Right. I checked it for that reason. $68 flight was delayed two and a half hours. WestJet never gets my money again. First and worst. That's it. Their staff, their staff was lovely. Their staff was wonderful. Their organization, I have a problem with. Yep. Yep. Uh, saw a couple of comments about, uh, the fact that we're covering so much American stuff. Uh, absolutely. Um, get it, but, it's kind of historic it's stuff big news that's going on i mean it's like when in our lifetimes has there been a president that's decided that they're not going to run in the middle of a campaign that they're going to mm -hmm. step down uh you know since reagan when has there been an assassination attempt right but, it's a lot it, it's 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 big news it's a, well it's a political show it's big news it's a political show we focus on canadian politics but it's politics and general culture and even though that is u.s politics it is kind of general culture that affects our culture too so i think it's good that we lean into it yeah uh now uh my easter eggs is a little bit of good news since i ended a bit on a downer there before nice. <laughs> uh but um a gentleman named derek g uh g who is a cyclist and he will be competing at the Olympics, okay. became the third Canadian ever to finish in the top 10 in the Classification Générale of the Tour de France. Oh. Yes. That's why I know his name. Yes, because I read yeah. about him the other day. Yeah. So uh, he, uh, I think he got three top 10 finishes over the course of uh, the race. There's 21 stages. Some of them are time trials. The end was a time trial. Usually the last time trial ends on the ground, you know, grand and going through the Champs-Élysées and whatnot, but because of Olympic preparations, uh, it was uh, one from a, a ride from a, a Monaco to Nice, I think mm -hmm. instead. Um, but uh, he finished a sixth in that time trial, which uh, clinched the ninth place overall. Like I said, that's a big thing, race. There's like 160 riders when yeah. it starts. It's like one of the most noted sports events all around the globe. And mm -hmm. Canadians have finished top 10 only twice before right before the Olympics, oh, picks cool. up. so he's ready. Uh, big congratulations as well to uh, Team Canada, uh, our volleyball players, I think the girls under 19 team, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so uh, that, that would just be girls won, then, yeah. The, yeah, that just won uh, the Pan American uh, Cup, defeating the United States three games to one, uh, three sets to one in that one. And then uh, in a basketball, the world under 17 championships for women uh, were going on. 
and uh, Canada I was playing in the final, I believe, against also against the USA. And for some reason, or is that tonight? I might be mistaken. Yes, played against the final. Unfortunately, they lost 84-64, uh, but picked up uh, the silver medal, the world under-17 women's championships. Nice. So, the future is really, really good. Kids are all right. It, we, we've, the, the Olympic uh, coverage, I think, kicks off Thursday. The Parade of Nations is on Friday. I will be watching as much of it as I possibly can. I go back, mm -hmm. it's Monday, so a week from today. So I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to, like I said, today will be my working day where I'm going to get all the edits and everything out of the way so that I can enjoy the rest of this week uh, worry-free. Yeah. There is some uh, competition Thursday and Friday. Team Canada's first in action, I believe, on Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern, I believe, our mm. Canadian women's soccer team takes on New Zealand. Oh, outstanding. Yes, yes prior to the opening ceremonies. So there you go. All, All right, right, kids and cubs, have a beautiful day. I'll see you. And try not to let the events get ahead of you. <sighs>